Matt Hallam is from Atlanta, Georgia, and was unsurprisingly very musical, playing a ton of instruments. So when his parents made him go to college, Matt, being a music kid, was like, okay, I don't want to go to college, but if I have to, I'll go to the University of Texas in Austin because Austin is the live music capital of the world. So he went to UT in Austin, Texas, and ended up working on TSTV, the Texas Student Television Program, a TV station run by students. Here, Matt was trying to make a kung fu series called Vicious Cyclone, and he wanted to edit it to make it seem like an authentic kung fu series, so he took an editing class to learn how. And when he got to the class, his editing teacher was super life-changing and influential, but not in a good way. Because apparently, according to Matt, the teacher was a huge dick and was super full of himself and thought he was smarter than everyone else. And that teacher's name was Bernie Burns. So that's how Matt and Bernie met and became friends. And from this, they created the show Sneak Peek, a movie review show for TSTV. But really, they made the show just to get free movie tickets. Sneak Peek is also where the famous Bernie and Matt Adam Sandler interview came from. And it was also worked on by Mariel Salcedo when she was a student at UT. But Bernie also wanted to make his own movie. Since he was studying computer science, Bernie didn't really know how to make films. So he enlisted the help of people like Matt, who actually knew about movie production, to help him make The Schedule which, according to IMDb, is a movie about a random, normal dude who ends up with a lovely job of reaping the souls of the dead. The movie was a huge hassle for them since they were shooting on film, but on a budget of only $9,000. But after around 11 months, after a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, they finally finished the movie. It was shown at a small theater and at a couple film festivals, so in total, probably a couple hundred people saw it. So the movie was shown to a smaller audience, and it was also released on VHS, way before you could just put movies on the internet, so it's pretty hard to get a copy of it. I personally have never seen the movie, so let us know in the comments if you have. And after making the schedule and graduating with a degree in film, Matt got a job in Hollywood and moved to Los Angeles. This is also where he lived with a paramedic guy who told him about the five signs of death. Here, he worked in visual effects, working on stuff like Scooby-Doo and Driven, starring Sylvester Stallone. So at the time, Matt was building his film career in LA, working on a ton of different projects. But, here's the best part. One day, Matt's boss came up to him and was like, Hey Matt, we got this offer to work in New Zealand and work on this movie series called The Lord of the Rings, but we'd have to be there for like five years. And I was like, eh, I don't want to go to New Zealand. So I turned it down for us. And Matt was like, ah, you did what? But Matt also boned himself later, because after that, his boss came back and was like, hey, we got another job offer to work on some movie. It's about some dude and he goes into a computer or something. And Matt was like, that sounds stupid. I don't want to work on that. So Matt turned it down. That movie was The Matrix, which would go on to win countless awards, especially in visual effects. So Matt could have done the visual effects for The Lord of the Rings and The Matrix and definitely would have gotten a ton of awards for all of them, but ended up working on none of them. But what he did do was instead he helped start a cute little show on the internet. Because in the early 2000s, Matt saw a video on the web that would change his whole life. Matt, while working on some movies, saw one of his employees goofing off watching some random internet videos. And he was like, oh boy, that lazy dude is goofing off again. I better straighten him up. So he went over and what he saw stunned him. It was Gus. His employee was watching a video of Gus. And Matt was like, what? Why do you have a video of Gus on your computer? Do you know him? What's going on? And the guy was like, who's Gus? I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. Because it turns out that Bernie and Gus, all the way in Austin, made a parody of the Apple Switch commercials, where Gus played a gamer who switched to a Mac and was making fun of how gaming on a Mac sucks balls. And when they posted it, it got super popular and was being shared all over the place. And now it made its way to LA and to one of Matt's employees. And when Matt watched it, he recognized that the jokes were written in Bernie's writing style. So he called Bernie and was like, Hey, I just saw this video of Gus and it seemed like something you'd write. Is this you? And Bernie was like, Yeah, we made that video, but we just put it on the internet like six hours ago. How did you get it? This may seem like a no-brainer now. Like, yeah, of course a viral video would spread quickly on the internet. Duh. But you have to remember that this was in the early 2000s. Viral internet videos weren't really a thing back then. So the fact that Bernie and Gus could post a video, and then a couple hours later, Matt, 
halfway across the country, could see it on his own, was crazy to them. And it was this moment that they realized the potential of the internet. They realized that on the web, things could spread on their own and get incredibly popular, with people all over the world watching. All these people in the film industry were struggling to get their stuff shown in film festivals and in theaters. But now, the internet was a place where that exposure could actually be achieved. So later, Bernie contacted Matt and was like, Matt, I've got this idea for a show I want to make on the internet, and I need you to play a grizzly sergeant. Can you do it? That show was Red vs. Blue, and little did Matt and Bernie know that this was the start of one of the most popular internet shows in the entire world.